Hey, uh, so I wanted to take a look at Curaleaf. Uh, this is the last of our hype stocks. Um, ticker symbols C-U-R-L-F. That's the one I'm tracking. Uh, so we do have some news items that I'm going to go over, and then we'll go into the technical analysis and just see if anything's changed since the last time we looked at it. Uh, so to start, let's just look at where it was before and see just what's happened since. Uh, so last time we looked at this cure leaf was on June 5th. At that time, it was trading in the $2 range. Uh, we had a buy point marked at $4. So because it was less than four, we felt like it was a good time to buy. And uh, it looks like we did. Uh, that's what this purple is. Uh, so I'll just blank that out, uh, see if we should buy this one again. Uh, we also noted resistance at six or seven dollars. Uh, so again, we'll see if that's changed at all. And then the note that we left ourselves was it was actively in a step down trend, which more or less means, you know, it was trading at say five dollars. And then for whatever reason, it dropped down to three dollars and was trading there. And then all of a sudden it dropped down to two dollars. And so that's kind of the idea. It's stepping down and then kind of uh, having some support slash resistance in a like a, a little consolidation zone, taking another step. So that's kind of what uh, I'm I mean there. Uh, also mentioning it was at or near an all time low with a market cap that was really just two times revenue. So that's pretty good. And uh I guess last time we looked, it was actually at one and a half times revenue. So that seems like an even better deal. Uh, so let's just go into the news here, see what's been going on. Um, and uh, this is from, so about a month, uh, probably a month and a half, actually. Uh, so let's see just what's been going on here. Uh, so right off the bat, uh, it's before then, but still, uh, they did release their first quarter 2023 that was actually two months ago uh, we're gonna go over that um because i don't think we did on the june uh, last time we checked in this in june 5th so we're gonna do that now uh, and then it also mentions that they celebrated the launch of uh, their adult sales in maryland so that means revenue should continue to grow depending on how many locations they have there uh, so let's just pause the news aspect and let's look at these financials, see what's kind of sticking out to us. Uh, so we did go through it just kind of briefly, and I just picked out some items that I thought were important here. Uh, so first quarter revenue, uh, $336 million. Okay, 14% year over year. That's, you know, that's okay. Uh, again, I because this company's so small, uh, I would I would like it to be in the 20s if not the 30s so 14% is kind of disappointing to for me to hear but again it's it's double-digit growth uh, I can live with it uh, hopefully it continues to ramp up uh, operating cash flows uh, 30.6 million uh, I guess that's all right uh, it's positive I, I suppose uh, Cash on the balance sheet, 115, 116 million dollars. So, have a decent amount of cash to play with, which is always good. Uh, their quarter one 2022 revenue was 296 million. Uh, so that's that 14 percent. Um, again, I just thought it would grow quicker. Uh, I guess it's still early, so we'll see. Uh, gross profit, though, I'm liking this. Gross profit is 160. 161 million dollars which is gross margin of 48 percent and so that's kind of the ideal if we can find companies with a gross margin of 50 percent especially in the beginning stages as long as that continues the revenue continues to expand and the gross margin stays around 50 percent it should work out nicely uh, that's kind of how the tech companies work here we are if that continues to stay true it should be a sweet sweet deal here uh, down here in the bottom left we have the total revenue and so the numbers on the far left that is end of quarter one uh, the middle represents uh, fourth quarter of 22 
and then we can compare it to first quarter of 22. And all I wanted to show is how the revenue, it's just not growing as fast as I thought it would. Uh, again, if we look at uh, first quarter this year compared to last year, 14%. That's that's okay. You know, uh, again, I wish it would be higher, but 14% is, it's okay. Uh, I guess, I don't know if I should be disappointed or happy that revenue actually dropped slightly between fourth quarter and first quarter. Uh, I The reason why I say I don't know if I should be disappointed because number one, that's flat. I mean, this company should be growing, uh, you know, maybe 5% quarter over quarter. So to see it go down, should I be, that's why I'm feeling like, oh, that's not very good. And then of course the spin, the positive outlook would be, uh, well, normally for consumer discretionary type of uh, companies, fourth quarter is normally like the boom quarter because all the holidays. And so uh, I think it'd be nice if we could look back. I didn't pull these figures, but if we could look back to kind of prove that, that it's not flat revenue for the year, that it's like, you know, if we saw in 22 that the first three quarters were say, uh, well, we know the first quarter was about 300. If we then saw it go from 300 to 305 to maybe 315 and then all of a sudden a pop of 344 in the fourth quarter and then all of a sudden here we are at the end of the first quarter and it didn't uh, drop back down to 310 or I guess 300 that's kind of positive you know uh, so we'll just keep following this one see how it develops uh, some of the highlights that they shared that happened in the first quarter uh, they exceeded their expense reduction plan uh, by $20 million, so that's good. I guess they were aiming to save $60 million, and they've already saved $20 million. So that's pretty phenomenal, especially considering it's only been the first quarter. Uh, they opened three more stores in Florida, making it 58 for the state. They apparently were proactive in closures in California, Colorado, and Oregon. I'm very surprised by this only because I felt, I mean, I realize I'm kind of new to this company, but I thought those are the states that this place started. Um, maybe that's true. Maybe that's not. But apparently they're, I don't, I don't think they closed out all the stores. It would have been nice if they said, you know, they still have X amount of stores in Colorado or whatever. Um, so without digging into it and just looking at the blurb to me um, i guess i'm gonna take it as maybe they have 10 stores in each of these states and they proactively closed maybe one or two in each states um, but again them doing that the purpose is they believe they're going to save cost and they are going to improve inventory position so at least financially Clearly, that was a good choice, so we'll see how it plays out over the next quarter. Uh, they launched Jams, which is like some edible brand. Uh, it needs... Uh, so apparently, this was a need for some of the consumers in Arizona and Florida, which is why they did it. Uh, so good. Uh, they'll hopefully get more customers because of that product. They also expanded Grassroots and Find in New Jersey and this Be Noble brand in Florida. So brand expand, expansion, that's fine. Uh, they also allowed adult use in Connecticut. They had two locations there. Apparently they also closed a facility in Massachusetts. They repurposed a facility in New Jersey and they closed some outdoor grow facility in Florida. Uh, also three older sites that have been replaced by newer, more efficient facilities so it, it sounds like it's churning through some facilities um, I think it mentions how many I want to say it's like one between 150 and 160 locations so the fact that we're seeing some churn in maybe like five to ten locations that's okay you know it's not crazy and here it is up here in the top left um, 
let's just go through it first. So they completed an acquisition, I remember this, of Des Desert Wellness in Utah. Cureleaf uh, added three new stores in that state for a total of four. And apparently the market's only 15. So they have a third of Utah. And that's great. You know, if they can just walk right, right into a state and take like 33% of it right off the bat, uh, that's why we like this. We like the expansion. We want that to happen very quickly, especially when new states are approved. Uh, so I like that. Um, strategically, they expand retail footprint in Florida, opening two additional stores, reaching 60. Uh, so as of May uh, 17th of this year, they had 152 locations. So that's pretty much in line with what I said earlier. Um, and I guess before I continue on, these are the notes that they left uh, that happened between when first quarter ended, so March 31st, and when they were actually published, so it sounds like May 17th, these things happened in that like two month period, one and a half month period, that's what these are referring to. Uh, they also launched a new mobile app, which apparently already has nearly two million members. So that's good, I haven't looked at the app, but interesting, I like the idea. And I'm glad to see so many people are using it so quickly. And then they added another brand, Grassroots, to Florida. So we'll see how that all kind of evolves over the rest of this year. Uh, I guess let's go to uh, let's go to the top right where we talk about the net income. Uh, so right off the bat, we're looking at gross profit, net loss, and uh, overall net loss. Uh, I guess these are really the same. Um, so I guess let's start with gross profit here. Uh, number one, I'm not sure what happened in last quarter. So if someone knows and can add to this, that'd be very helpful. Uh, but it looks like, for whatever reason, they saved a lot. I don't know if it was like inventory-based thing. I mean, it must have been. Uh, they must have been getting deals for cheap or something because they spent, in terms of revenue, it was relatively flat. I mean, we're talking about $8 million here, difference in revenue, and yet they brought in um, $44 million extra in gross profit. So, yeah, I don't know if it was just the type of things they, they were selling, uh, very unlikely, or if it was just their inventory got marked down or something somehow they were able to get more gross profit to that 48 percent that we saw that was not the case last quarter uh it was the case in first quarter 22 so i don't know if it's a first quarter thing or uh, or maybe a fourth quarter thing where they write off things at the end of the year um just something that's worth noting uh and then of course this net loss uh so Again, I guess I just don't recall. I'd have to look back to figure it out, but something clearly happened in last year. I, I don't know if maybe it was this acquisition of Desert Wellness at a part. Uh, but yeah, to go from a net loss of $262 million to only down $56 million, uh, don't get me wrong, the, a loss is a loss and that's not good. But to drop it by that amount, you would expect this one to be in profit next quarter. Most likely it's not going to be, but something clearly happened in fourth quarter uh, for it to drop. And so that's why I, I highlighted it to make sure we were aware of that. Uh, and then to break out the revenue, that's the bottom left here. We have, it, it's all, it all comes down to retail. Uh, you can see wholesale really just makes up 60 to $70 million, which Again, no laughing matter. That's probably, that's between 20, 25% of total revenue. So quite a big chunk. The, the majority is retail sales. Um, again, that one jumped a lot from 225 to 273 in a year. Uh, and in terms of just between fourth quarter and first quarter, relatively flat, which I'm going to actually take in terms of retail, I'm going to take that as a good sign. I'm very excited to see the second quarter. If it stays flat at 270s, I, I think that's a good sign. 
hopefully we we bump it up to like 280 290 especially considering they're opening new stores you you would kind of expect that to be the case but um, even if it stayed in 270s i'd be okay with that this management fee income not really a thing here you know it, it is bringing in a uh, million dollars but um I'm curious if that's due to like franchising like McDonald's, if that is kind of what their plan is of breaking that out, that could be something down the road. It's just right now it's too small. Um, but of course we we're looking at it. Uh, some balance sheet items. We mentioned this earlier about 115 to 116 million in cash. They had about 590 million in outstanding debt. Uh, so that's not good. But again, it's probably long term, you know, 10 years, 20 years. So it shouldn't be anything to be worried about. Uh, let's see. They also invested 26 million in capital expenditures. Again, they're expanding. So this makes sense. I'm surprised it's not more. Uh, but, you know, they're staying in budget. And considering how much debt they have, uh, just means they need to make some more money. Uh, next, we have uh, the balance sheet. Just a couple things here. Uh, so in terms of their current ratio, you know, they do have more assets than current liabilities. So they're good for now. Uh, they are cutting it close. It, it really is like a one-to-one -one ratio, which is all you need. Um, and I guess that's fine. You know, a growing company to be at that ratio, that's perfectly fine. Um, I guess the intangible assets, I'm not really sure how it's that high. Or what's included there um, but yeah it's it is kind of it's a little bit nervous it, especially because I'm just not sure what that intangibles is uh, we'll have to look into that for for next time uh, just because again it is so much uh, and they don't really have much to bank on not much is in AR a lot of inventory um, as long as they can move that inventory, they should be fine. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much, we're pretty good there. Um, yeah, as long as the current asset or, or the current ratio is fine, uh, we'll just keep tracking it. Uh, but not the healthiest balance sheet, I will say that. Uh, so that covers the financial sheet uh, or statements. Uh, some other news we saw was uh, Clever Leaves. So this was um, I guess they made a purchase in Portugal and uh, I guess the this Clever Leaves left some assets that Cureleaf was able to just take over. Uh, not sure how much that really impacts anything, but uh, you know, they're expanding. So that's really the takeaway there. Um, I'm not sure if we mentioned it, but they're open in Connecticut now. They launched a store in Groton, Connecticut uh, they unveiled a strategic national rebrand of Select. I can't really tell by the picture here what uh, that really is, but it sounds like it's a variety of products. It looks like, uh, I'm just not sure. And then here we have, they mentioned the new mobile app, which already has like 2 million users. I'm sure that's even gotten more since then. Uh, and we'll just keep tracking it as long as they're telling us about it. Uh, and then the last thing before the technicals is they are expecting to release their second quarter uh, in August or on August 9th. So we'll keep tracking it. Uh, and once it's released, we'll we'll give it a look. Uh, so that's that pretty much wraps up the news. Let's uh, look at the technicals and see what's going on here. Uh, so. Let's see. The first time we the last time we looked at this was June fifth, so that was somewhere around here, right in the two dollar range. Uh, since then, it's gone straight up pretty much. Uh, we had this big jump here uh, on the first week of July. Second week, it has pulled back some, uh, but overall, I mean, we're still in the buy point range because uh, again, we were looking at the four dollar range. Um, I guess we could put another buy spot. Maybe that's 
And this is kind of the step down that I was referring to uh, in the note. It was right around here, like high fours, low fives. And then all of a sudden in December of last year, it stepped down to like the $3 range, the mid to low threes, hung out there. And then it crashed in March, hung out in like the mid $2 range for like April, May. And now here we are, it's on the climb again. Uh, so that's what I was referring to about the step down. Uh, we can say, I guess what I, I can do here is uh, we can add in a uptrend. I'm going to make this purple just to kind of match our other uh, spreadsheets that we have or uh, charts that we have. And if I were to just draw it out like this, keeping it as parallel as I can, looks pretty good. Uh, so this looks like the uptrend. Uh, and I'm going to update this. Uptrend started in May until something goes different. So I'm going to remove the step down. I'm going to remove the all-time low, which seems like it was at about 220. We're way beyond that now at 370. So I'm going to remove those two pieces. And we're going to update that to uh, uptrend started in May of 23. Uh, the market cap is two times revenue. Uh, I'm not going to look into that right now. And um, okay. So I guess let's just look at, so currently it's in the $3 range, so we can update that. Uh, buy point we had in the $4 range. And if now that I look even closer at it, it's like 490, so it's technically like five. If I were to, I'm actually gonna add another uh, buy point here. I'm gonna put it right around where it's trading at now um, in like the $3 range. And so the reason I have that is because right here, there was for whatever reason for about a month and a half, two months, 370, was strong support for this company. Not sure why. Uh, and then ultimately it came down. And now here we are again. For some reason, it's choosing to hang out at 370. You can see it popped up to about four, low fours. And then all of a sudden, last week, it pulled back to about where it is now, 370s. So I'm liking that. I'm going to put three and four as buy points for this one and again to be more specific it's like three 370 and 490 those points seem to have some support behind it so that's why those were picked uh, resistance at six and seven uh, six is that blue line again if we look at like mid last year we had a lot of resistance at six dollars where we had one time where it couldn't get above here's two times here's three times and the fourth time it did get over stayed there for a month and came crashing down so multiple times it could not get above six and then seven dollars uh got rejected a couple times here when it pulled below it and we haven't been above it since uh, if we go back a little ways uh, we can see, again, $7 acted as some resistance. We could kind of count these ones, but probably shouldn't. But here's another instance. Um, we could count these uh, only because, yes, it, it, it technically stopped more like in the $8 range. But uh, the reason I'm saying that I would consider counting it is because it, it cracked that line for such a short period of time like two weeks above it and then it came right back you know if it was above it for like two three four months yeah i'm not counting that but it, it for only being above it for that short of a period i would consider counting it but right now uh yeah i guess another buy point um i'm not gonna put this uh, and it kind of matches but considering the uptrend 
you know, the bottom of the uptrend is like 315. Again, I'm just forgetting the pennies here and it's $3, you know, $3 at the top, $3 at the bottom. Uh, yes, it's a game of pennies, but I'm not playing that game. It's, it's too narrow of a window for me to worry about. So, uh, either, either at the bottom or the top of that channel, it's $3. So, uh, we can leave it at that. And then the six, seven, like I said, I'll, I'm going to keep those in. Um, there might be, for whatever reason, there might be some resistance at like 390. So I'm going to actually put in one more line for us. Uh, I'm going to make it red, but I'm just going to make it kind of a finer line so that we can still see it. But I don't think it's going to hold very long, but I am going to put it in just because for whatever reason, it was trading within such a narrow window between 370 and like $4 right in here like two months where it just was in that small little sliver and here we are again it it broke that resistance point pulled right back so i think we'll have a decision uh definitely before the end of the third quarter we'll know for sure is that the new resistance at four or is it going to keep this uptrend and continue on to four five six dollars um, i'm just going to update the date on this to today and um, let's see market cap is um, as of 6.5.23 okay uh, yeah so that pretty much wraps this up uh, here we have a quick recap for us uh, so Cure Leaf Currently trading in the $3 range. I have buy points marked at $3 and $4. So that's why it gets the green. It's a buy for me. Uh, resistance is at 6 and 7 uh, So again, small figures, but very likely to double up. Uh, and then we noted that this uptrend started in May of 23. We'll see if that continues on. Uh, market cap right now, or at least last time I looked, was between 1.5 and, and 2 times revenue. Uh, I'll look at it next time uh, to see where that weighs in. I'm assuming it's very close to that range between one and a half and two and a half times revenue. That should still be kind of the, where it is right now. Uh, so that wraps this up. If, if you think I missed anything or if you want to add something that I didn't mention, especially over the past month for this company, by all means, let me know. Uh, be very informative for me too. Um, also, if you have any questions, uh, by all, feel free to leave them down below. I'll do my best to answer them. And, uh, but yeah, that's it. So please like, subscribe. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.